sunrise before the sun. The predators who stalk the odds. The winners who demand an edge. You're listening to the boss of the big ball. JP the Tether. Listen every weekend, Saturday and Sunday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. to Vegas Scoreboard Express live on KSHP 107.1 FM and AM 1400 as I unleash a barrage of insightful analysis, expert predictions, and winning strategies from the sharpest minds in sports betting to get your money back from the sports books. Go to jbtheticket.com and tune in to KSHP this weekend, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. to win with the Sharps. JP the Ticket. Vegas Scoreboard Express. All money, all sports, no bull. Miss the live show? Subscribe to Vegas Scoreboard Express on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and wherever you enjoy your favorite podcast and radio listening. I'm back at you live and waking you up early in the morning, and I got him in studio with me. My main man, Ron, third down, best bets. What's going on, Ron? Good morning, Las Vegas. How are you, brother? There you go. This man is in studio. He is in studio. He is not on the phone with you. Vegas Scoreboard Express waking you guys up early in the morning here. KSHB 107.1 FM AM 1400. Again, my main man, Ron, third down, best bets, has made it to... The Las Vegas Strip this morning in studio. We're going to be talking some college football. Going to be talking a whole lot of NFL, getting things ready to go. Talking about those Raiders. That prayers chance is still hanging out there, guys. Can they get the wild card? We're going to be talking about that this morning. Ronnie B., Las Vegas Chief Handicapper, JB the Ticket, is going to be coming on the show this morning. Talking about his picks for today. And that's it, folks. That's what we're doing. It's football all weekend. We got some NFL, like I told you, on deck today. College football, bowl games last night. Ohio State. Wow. What was that about? But shout out to the Missouri Tigers getting it done. Held Ohio State scoreless. We'll talk about the changes in the players, okay, that are available to these teams. And when you're looking at some of these stalwarts, some of these national powers, the bowl season has been proven to be a big time loser for a lot of the betters. But Ron, third down best bets. Any quick shout outs before we take this first commercial break? You are here in studio today. Let's get it going. Yeah, I gotta start with my main man, Jared Garcia. Been supporting me the whole way, and thanks for all your help, brother. There you go, Jared Garcia. Thank you so much for listening to the show and being a part of what we're doing here at Vegas Scoreboard Express. You guys keep it locked. We're up early. We're trying to dig out some money, and we're gonna get it. Listening to the boss of the big boy, JP the Tech. Vegas Scoreboard Express. Giving you that green. Skip your cable bill this month and join the action with JB and Fubo TV. Get seven days free, 15% off your first month. No credit check, no deposit, no installation hassle. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. Sign up, download the app, and start watching games. Enjoy being a subscriber after the first month. Easy cancellation anytime. Regional restrictions apply. Sign up at VegasCoreboardExpress.com. Kick off the football season with Drizzly.com. Score big with your favorite drinks delivered right to your doorstep. From ice cold brews to game day cocktails, we've got the perfect lineup for your football gatherings. Visit VegasScoreboardExpress.com and click the Drizzly. Now let's get the party started. Drink responsibly must be of legal drinking age. Delivery and availability may vary. Giving you that great. 
Can it be the ticket? Vegas Scoreboard Express back at you live. My main man, Ron. Third down, best bets is in the building. Breaking it down for you. We're talking this college football week in bowl week 18. We're finishing it out, coming into the new year six bowls. That's right. Being brought to you by our friends over at Fubo TV. Be sure to go to FuboTV.com slash JB, saving you 15% off, giving you that free deal. And again, be sure to pick up that deal today. I'm going to be changing that deal next year. The title deal, Fubo TV, is still going to be our partner, but we're going to be offering you guys something different each and every week, making the changes again. Ron, third down, best bets in the building with us. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Now, over the past couple of weeks, you've been on sabbatical, hanging out with family, the holidays. You finally got out here to Las Vegas. Sports betting has been a very, very uh, confusing situation over the last couple of weekends. We've been looking for the money. When you look at the record of the favorite, they're winning less than 52% of the time. You have underdogs again. Shout out the Missouri Tigers last night. Who would have thought you keep Ohio State scoreless for three quarters, break out two touchdowns, and then they can only get a field goal. So talk to me a little bit about what you've seen with these college bowl games. I'm sitting here looking at some of the replays right now. A lot of the players that are superstars throughout the season, as you know, during the NIL era, they're just not going to play anymore. And the reason they're not doing it is because of the money. And it's affecting lines. It's affecting games. Teams that may not have won bowl games in the past are now getting an opportunity. But from a sports betting side of it, I just, I'm not seeing the money, man. I'm not, I'm not wagering these things. I mean, today I will. There are some teams that I like. I like LSU. On the line, I like Georgia, and I like Penn State. But the rest of these teams over the past couple of weeks, it's just been a lot of snooze fest. We saw Memphis take down Iowa State. What is it going to take for college football to not go the way of college basketball? Because, you know, college basketball is on a milk cart. Forget it. Rick Pitino's coaching up at St. John's. Who cares? Nobody. You know what I mean? Whatever. We, we are stretching the football season out as long as we possibly can here on Vegas Scoreboard Express. That's what the fans want. And it's still football. We love football. But being a sports better, when you are taking a favorite and they get blown out by two touchdowns or go scoreless, and when you see what Notre Dame was able to do in their bowl game, I mean, it was just, you know, Oregon State. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, Oregon State got nothing. Everybody's gone. Coach, quarterback, you know what I mean? Everybody. That's what I'm talking about. You look at a team that was a very dangerous team in the final year of the Pac-12, had athletes, had players, and then they come into the bowl game and just start. They break out the flour. They break out the, the milk and the eggs. And they start rolling donuts. And it is just something that I have seen over the past couple of weeks in the sports book where line makers, the in game betting has become more prevalent, but you're still seeing a lot of betters take losses. So again, Ron, your thoughts on that. And then we'll go into some of the scores yesterday and then get into today's action. Go ahead. Well, I'd kind of like to know why they have to hit the transfer portal before the Bulls. Right. You know, why can't they wait till after the Bulls? They're losing a lot of top players and they're transferring and they're just sitting out. Well, the reason being is with college football being the way that it is now, it's really an unregulated industry. And what's going to happen is they're kind of trying to let this shake out. But I don't think that conference upheaval, the relationship between coaches and players. I mean, we saw Alabama quarterback Jalen Miller yesterday throw his offensive coordinator under the bus. Yeah. And media day. And. I think this is just the more of the me, me, me culture with these young kids. A lot of the players that are out there right now that you're seeing in these post game are not the players that you saw during the season. Who would have thought that you get your first start in a bowl game? I mean, let's, I mean, it's good for the kids that are playing, but imagine being a backup the entire season. And then they're like, Hey, we want you to start in the cotton bowl. Hey, we want you to start in the quick dot com loop. Lube it up and send it down the road bowl. You know what I mean? Yeah, being an SC fan, look what happened to them. Oh. Caleb Williams doesn't play. Miller Moss comes in, six touchdowns, wins the holiday bowl. The guy sat there for three years on the sat bench. Sat there for three years hasn't, on the bench. Hasn't complained, just waited his turn. That's kind of been the way it has been with the quarterback room at USC. You remember Mitch Mustaine. 
uh, guys like Matt Leinert. He played behind some guys, John David Booty. I'm just naming some guys off, but the guy that sticks out with me is Matt Castle because this guy never took a snap under center for more than two and a half sets, and then he's in the NFL yeah. as a backup for 10 years and will probably end up being a very, very good college coach if he does turn out into the rankings because he sure. understands that. But from the perspective I've talked to people in college sports, these young players, they don't commit. It's not a long-term commitment to every program. Yeah. And these coming out parties, I guarantee you, you're going to see every single one of these starting quarterbacks that won a bowl game, if not guaranteed a position next year, they're going to look for the transfer portal as well. And college football has expanded so much. You've got a double A teams, Appalachian State. You've got players from all over the country getting an opportunity to play. Yeah. The, the plethora of bowl games. Again, I don't knock that. I think that's. Somewhat facetious, somewhat boring, could be costly if you don't know how to bet. But at the same time, it does give players an opportunity to continue to play. You've got secondary football leagues now sprouting up in the United States, which we haven't seen. And that's good for business, the local communities. Absolutely. You look at the uh Birmingham Iron or something. I remember in one of these little leagues that fell apart a couple of seasons ago. But they were a good football team, and uh, the Alabama community picked up on that. But when you talk about going back into college football yesterday, 40 to 8, Notre Dame destroying Oregon State. And again, shout out to Oregon State for making it to a bowl game. But what am I telling you? You're taking these six, seven, eight win teams. This is what you're going to see out there, people. This is what you're going to see. Clemson, Dabo Swinney came back for a little bit of redemption, nine and four season, winning their Gator Bowl over Kentucky. Again, Kentucky, another one of those seven win teams. Warned you guys about that. Memphis, shockingly, getting it done. A 10-3 and team, but coming from a little bit of a smaller school there compared to Iowa State, getting it done in the Liberty Bowl. So let's talk about another game, again, that last night. Who saw this coming? Rutgers. This is kind of a backyard, ACC backdoor deal. Well, guess what? They beat Miami. 31 to 24. Again, another game. I didn't see it coming because I don't know who any of these players are. I'm looking at all of the starting quarterbacks that we covered throughout the season. None of them are there and we're getting into the new year six. I'm going to look at to see if some of those another rosters. Another transfer guy. That's why Tyler Van Dyke transferred to Wisconsin. There so. you go. So, you know, Miami getting beat. But the Missouri Ohio State game again. Shout out the Missouri Tigers, a real eleven and two team. Ohio State. Remember, we talked about this on the show a couple of weeks back. A lot of people figured that they might have, should have been, maybe considered in that college football playoff because of what happened to Florida State. But now we know again they were paper champions. And I warned you guys about Ohio State all year. They were not the real deal. Missouri, another backup quarterback coming in playing. But he did well. So let's talk about some of the games on the line today. It is, you know, I'm looking at the spreads. They're all over the place from 21 down to three and a half. And when you talk about the Georgia Florida State game at one o'clock, that's the big time game this morning. We're going to bring on Ronnie B, Las Vegas chief handicapper, JB the ticket to go over that game with us. But before we take this short commercial break, Ron, let's talk about this Ole Miss and Penn State game. These are two teams that are always right outside Heaven's Gate. Can't quite get over the hump to get into the national championship, any meaningful college playoff. But however, next year with the expanded playoff, you know how they do it. Everybody can win a medal. Yay! <laughs> Rotation number 265, the Mississippi Rebels. Plus four, plus 160 on the money line. The total is 51. Penn State, rotation number 266. The Nittany Lions are trying to make it happen. This is the Peach Bowl in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Who's starting? We don't know. It's been an upheaval. Ron, if you go over this SEC Big Ten matchup, who do you think has the edge here? You've got two 10-2 teams. I'm looking at coaching. 
And a lot of it comes down to coaching and sports betting with this type of situation where the coaches are having players go to the transfer portal. If the rosters are loaded and the coaches know how to work them, in my opinion, I would kind of lean a little bit of Lane Kiffin here to get you to the over. It's just his offensive scheme. I think I the agree. players are just going to be able to throw a bunch and, of points up Penn on the board. State, Penn State lost their defensive coordinator, Manny Diaz. He took a head coaching job, and he was very crucial to their defense. So, Well, there you have it. So some coaching changes in the big room over at Penn State. I'm telling you right now, go with Ole Miss today, guys. Go ahead and go with that dog. It's a very, very easy decision for me. When you talk about coaching offensive, Lane Kiffin has got an offensive mind that's going to be able to put some points on the board, and he wants to make another case to make the SEC proud, bringing home another one of those bowl trophies. So when we get back from the short commercial break, I'm bringing him on the line with us, Ronnie B, Chief Handicapper, jptheticket.com. So you guys grab your bankroll and keep it locked with us here. We're about to do one thing, get the money. You're listening to the boss of the big ball, J.P. the Ticket, Vegas scoreboard Express, giving you that grief. Pine Hollow Winery is the first and only boutique winery in the Las Vegas city limits that features its own handcrafted wines. Located on the west side just minutes from the Strip at 7018 West Charleston, Pine Hollow Wines are available for tasting by the glass, bottle, or for carryout. Each lovers pick up a bottle of the Warm Fuzzy, which is a sweet Chardonnay-style wine made with peach and apricots. Visit PineHollowWinery.com for their events, wine menu, and hours. That's PineHollowWinery.com. Skip your cable bill this month and join the action with JB and Fubo TV. Get seven days free, 15% off your first month. No credit check, no deposit, no installation hassle. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. Sign up, download the app, and start watching games. Enjoy being a subscriber after the first month. Easy cancellation anytime. Regional restrictions apply. Sign up at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. JB the Ticket Vegas Scoreboard Express back at you live. Got him on the line with me, my main man, Ronnie B, Chief Handicapper JB at jbtheticket.com. Good morning, Ronnie B. How you doing, brother? Good morning, JB. Happy New Year to everybody. That's right. Happy New Year, guys. Coming up into the new year, going to be bringing you grease each and every Saturday and Sunday, moving to a new time, 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific time. Also going to be dropping more exclusive game exclusives on jbtheticket.com, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that, building out this network. Again, got him in studio today. Ron, third down best bets. Follow him on Instagram at RaiderHawk1. We're going to get that straightened out today. And, of course, my main man, Ronnie B., Chief Handicapper, jbtheticket.com. Go to jbtheticket.com. Today, I've got deals for you. I've got tickets. I've got everything you need to make it happen. So let's jump into the big board today because an interesting game is lined up for us. That orange bowl between the Georgia Bulldogs and the Florida State Seminoles, two teams that were really stalwarts and dynamic in college football this year. Georgia with only one loss in their last 40-some-odd games. Florida State going undefeated in the ACC non-conference play. Unfortunately, they got left outside looking. in that college football playoff to get to that national championship game. But should be interesting nonetheless because Florida State somehow Plus 21 underdogs. We know they lost Jordan Travis a couple of weeks back to a serious injury. Now their backup quarterbacks, Rodemaker, whoever it was, he came in and got them the undefeat. But I think he uh, has transferred out. Rod, third down, best bets. Uh, mentioned something to me about the Florida State Seminoles having their quarterbacks change. So I think that's why they're plus 21 Plus 700 on the money line. Again, talking about these Florida State Seminoles. Rotation number 270. Looks like a murder is going to happen on the line today. Georgia 269. Minus 20 and a half. Minus 1300. I mean, come on. 44 and a half is the total. Ronnie B, I'll throw this one at you. When you look at these two teams and you say any other year, any other game with their true starters in the game, this would be a correct line. But I heard that Georgia, half of their defensive line is in the transfer portal. 
Half of those other kids don't want to play because they're preparing for the NFL draft. But they get a minus 20, minus 21 type of pricing. What do you think the sports books are thinking in regards to this? Because when you remind yourself over the season, Georgia was the heavy favorite to go to the national championship. But now that they're outside looking in, okay, how do you feel that this line is today? Is there any chance for you to go with your original pick of the Florida State Seminoles undefeated for the plus 21? Heck, maybe even take them for that plus 700 to plus 800. Go ahead. You know, this uh, transfer portal and everything that's going on, you see with the games, even with Ohio State yesterday, it's uh, destroying the bowl games. Uh, it's making it very hard to handicap and very hard to even pay attention to the game. It's so boring. As far as the Florida State-Georgia game, yeah, I'm disappointed. Florida State, I had a future ticket on them. They couldn't make it to the Final Four. I've heard different things on the quarterbacks. Uh, don't even know who's going to be playing. I've heard a lot of the players have uh, opted out of the game. Georgia's the same thing. So I don't even know what, what to tell you, JB, on this game. Uh, the line is inflated. It's opened at 12, 13, 14. Now it's up to 21 and a half. I don't even have a clue on what to tell you on this game. Right. I'm telling you, I've been looking at all of the sports betting lines in the past week. And when I saw this game look like an early season game, and it should be maybe Georgia versus Florida Atlantic with a line like this. I mean, you know, not, not you know, shout out my boys over at FAM, you know, FAU and everything. But, you know, it's like, look, the Florida State Seminoles clamored to get to the national championship spot. They've sued the ACC. We know that's probably not going to go anywhere with the cost. But the Georgia Bulldogs, they've been relatively quiet. And they've had the transfer portal happen to them, and they've got other players. But when you talk about reloading, the Georgia Bulldogs are probably one of the best teams in America as far as reloading. And you're still talking about coaching with Kirby Smart. So, again, I'm looking at it from the perspective of if these games don't have the players, what are the head coaches going to do with their main schemes? And we see the bowl games now becoming less important for maybe – championship aspirations of teams and now kind of being like a preseason game for the next season to see what your other guys are made of. Go ahead. Ronnie B. To me, JB. Yeah, Ronnie B. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I don't know what the coaches are going to do at the sidelines here. Uh, I guess they're going to test the, the backups, uh, the freshmen. I mean, that's what Ohio State did yesterday. You saw what happened to them. Uh, they lost their uh, backup quarterback with an ankle injury, and then they bring a freshman in, uh, and it looked like deer in headlights. So I, I just think that uh, watch the games. Uh, don't be careless with your finances and uh, see what happens. But I don't think these coaches have any choices either except to play what they have. Got to play what they have. When you go over to you, uh, Ron Third Down Best Bets, the Florida State Seminoles, their coach, Coach Norville, the entire issue around Florida State. When you look at the player roster, you look at the coaching roster, you look at the changes in conferences, is this a game, is, and it's the most valuable game on the board when you talk about it from a dog <laughs> perspective at plus 800. Neutral site, do you feel that at least Florida State playing in Florida has some sort of a home field advantage over Georgia tonight in this game, just for the fact that this is the one game that they are getting at the end of the season in front of their fans. I think Florida as a state, as a fan base for Florida State is going to come out in mass. But Georgia, Florida, Georgia line people, they're right there. <laughs> and you know, Miami's not too big of a flight away. So how do you think this is going to go today, Ronnie B? I mean, you know, Ron Third Down Best Bets, you know Ronnie B is not really on this game, but the plus 20 or the plus 800 for all you Florida State people out there, if you just go by sheer numbers and you don't look at anything because I'm right now I'm on CBS.com and they don't have a stat up today. <laughs> not one. Zero, 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 zero. But you know why? Because all these players are changed. But when you talk about a head coaching matchup, Norville, Kirby, Smart, who are you putting your money on? Go ahead. I like Georgia. I mean, with all the people gone, everybody out, I'd still pick Georgia. I just think they have more talent. I think more talent's going to be there. And and I think Kirby Smart is really upset. I've seen some interviews. He really feels they were cheated. And I know Florida State feels they were cheated. So, I mean, no disrespect to them. I think they were as well. So, 
But, you know, Georgia just, they just have it, you know. They're a really good team. They're solid built, and they still got a lot of good players on that roster. And I just, I like that experience. He likes the experience of the Georgia Bulldogs. I'm staying off of this game, man. I'm just going to watch it. I don't know who's starting, and I don't have any stats. I would say coaching. Kirby Smart's the better coach, but of course, Norville, he's no slouch himself. Moving along down the line to another game today. This one is a little bit off the world. The Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl. Man, these guys are killing me with these names, bro. <laughs> Trying to keep up with these bowl games here. Rotation number 271, the Toledo Rockets. Another one of these teams coming out of the Mighty Mac. That you never hear of 11 and 2, 6 and 7 against the spread. Total is 44 and a half. They're going up against a Mountain West stalwart today in rotation number 272, the Wyoming Cowboys. Wyoming coming into this game at minus three and a half. Alma mater of Josh Allen, current quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. When you talk about this particular game, this is kind of the most evenly matched game on the line today for me. Two similar conferences, the MAC versus the Mountain West. Two similar records, 11 and 2, 8 and 4. When you go into this type of game where you have evenly matched conferences, evenly matched schools, players who really aren't going to be hitting the transfer portal for their main players because these guys can't really go and play anywhere else. I mean, you're at Toledo, you're at Wyoming. That's your ticket, kids. Don't waste the time. Throw this one over to you, Ronnie B. here in Las Vegas. Do you think Wyoming represents for the Mountain West today? Minus three and a half is their spread number. It opened up at two, at a plus two, by the way. So when you talk about it from that perspective, has there been some changes with Toledo? Have you been looking at this game today? Go ahead. I think when I looked at it a little bit, uh, it's one, like you said, it's most competitive probably on the board. Uh, I don't see too many transfers. I don't see too many sit-outs. I don't see too many injuries. Maybe uh, the running back for uh, Wyoming. Uh, but they're both evenly matched, a little more offense on the Toledo side of the ball. Uh, the third down percentage uh, for Toledo is pretty good, about 45%. So I'm going to take the points here. Uh, the road record for uh, Toledo is five and one. And, and Wyoming is one and four. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the points here and, uh, and see if I can get a win here. He's looking for the win with the points. Throwing this one over to you. Ron, third down best bets in studio, neutral site. Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl is coming out today. Toledo, the Rockets, trying to bring back a bowl title for the MAC. The Mountain West needs to get another bowl win. You talk about these guys coming out and playing solid football. You know what Wyoming is going to give you. They're going to give you smash mouth football. They've got some running back issues, but on the defensive side of the ball, they've got athletes, and I think they've got a lot of guys who can compete with a higher level. I mean, again, that eight and four record. Remember, I told you I like teams with at least eight wins to get to a bowl game. Okay, and this is the most evenly matched game from from your side. How do you see it? Go ahead. Well, I like teams that have eleven wins in bowl games, so I'm going to take Toledo. They're eleven and two, so I like I like what they've done this year. Wyoming is a smash mouth team. I think they'll keep it close, but I just think t- Toledo is going to run it down. Yep, Toledo is a good football team, and Wyoming again. I'm liking the total to go over. I don't see any reason why the total shouldn't go over here because these are two teams that are going to be playing for the love and pride of college football. I'm not seeing a lot of NIL talk, but I also am not seeing a lot of early stats on the game. You guys got to start fixing this. I know why the line makers and the sports writers aren't doing it because they don't know who's going to be playing. And if it's happening in the bigger conferences, they're going to be expecting it with some of these smaller games again and moving into another game today college football talking about it waking you up early in the morning my main man ronnie b here a loss of vegas chief handicapper for jbtheticket.com check him out and pick up those packages on jbtheticket.com this weekend coming into college basketball season nba these guys have got the picks in the grease for you when i get ready to take my sabbatical and go on vacation but the last game that i was looking at today auburn sec versus big 10 matchup again the trans perfect music city bowl i mean uh, come on i've never heard of these names 
Auburn, rotation number 267. The Tigers coming in at 6-6. Six and six. I'm not happy with this bowl. Losing teams, 500 teams. Maryland, 7-5, and five, barely better. Auburn, 3-2 and two on the road. Maryland, the Terrapins, 4-3 and three at home. It's a neutral site. It's a kind of a midday game for us, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're throwing this one over to you, Ronnie B. here in Las Vegas. What is going on with these 6-6 six and six teams? Are we going to look at another blowout? Are we looking at more static on the line today? Totals 47 and a half. Are we going to look at another snoozer from the Big Ten and the SEC? Go ahead. Well, I tell you what, I just, again, the 6-6 six and six is getting ridiculous to get into a bowl game. Uh, Maryland, uh, Tagliolova, quarterback, is going to not play. But I'm looking for this game to go over. I may put a little sprinkle on this thing myself here. I think they're going to both run up and down the field. I think they're going to have fun in this game. Uh, they both have decent offenses. So I'm going to play the over in this game. Telling you the over, it's alive, and that's where you want to keep it here. Ronnie B., Las Vegas Chief Handicapper, you stay on the line with me here. Ron, third down, best bets in studio with me, your boss of the big board, JB the Ticket. Follow me on Instagram at JB the Ticket. But most importantly, I want you guys to start going to my websites, jbtheticket.com, Vegas Scoreboard, Express.com. That's where I'm going to be dropping all the exclusives, people, because again, this social media can shut you down at any time. You can have a big following, post something, a file, and end up in that shadow band. But we're not trying to do that. We got our own network, our own price, our own money. JB the Ticket and Vegas Scoreboard Express. We're doing nothing but doing what? Bringing degrees back in a moment. Let's get it. You're listening to the boss of the big boy, JB the Ticket. <laughs> Vegas Scoreboard Express, Saturday and Sunday morning at 6 on KSHP North Las Vegas, FM, AM, K29, 6HP North Las Vegas, and KSHP.com. Kick off the football season with Drizzly.com. Score big with your favorite drinks delivered right to your doorstep. From ice cold brews to game day cocktails, we've got the perfect lineup for your football gatherings. Visit VegasScoreboardExpress.com. And click the drizzly. Now let's get the party started. Drink responsibly must be a legal drinking age. Delivery and availability may vary. As a three-time international award-winning restaurant, Joe's New York Pizza uses only the freshest and best available ingredients. From giant slices of hand-tossed pie to calzones, strombolis, fingers, and wings, Joe's serves all your favorites. Stop in for a slice at one of their two Las Vegas locations at Paradise and Harmon or South Las Vegas Boulevard, or you can check out their menu at joesnewyorkpizzalv.com. Basketball season is heating up, so stay in the game with Fubo TV. Get the NBA, NCAA, FIBA, and more. Get seven days free at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. Kick off the football season with Drizzly.com. Score big with your favorite drinks delivered right to your doorstep. From ice cold brews to game day cocktails, we've got the perfect lineup for your football gatherings. Visit VegasScoreboardExpress.com and click the Drizzly. Now let's get the party started. Drink responsibly must be a legal drinking age. Delivery and availability may vary. into the BSX Digital Sports Network. You heard it here first. Another exclusive track. Right now. The DJ keeping the party going. The DJ keeping the party going all night long. You're listening to the boss of the big boy. Back at you live, JB the Ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express in studio. My main man, Ron, a third town best bets, locking it in the grease with you. Follow him on Instagram at RaiderHawk1. Got him on the line with me as well. It's a Ron, Ron, Ron kind of day. Ronnie B, Chief Handicapper, Las Vegas, on the line with us, talking some of this college football bowl game. And let's jump into 
Another game that's coming on today. This one is being brought to you by our friends over at Fubo TV. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. Go to FuboTV.com slash JB. 15% off. Seven days free. Best deal in streaming right now. You get all the same channels you get without having to do a bunch of bundling. So, again, go to JBTheTicket.com. Click the link or go to FuboTV.com slash JB. You're going to see the exact same thing and save yourself some money. So let's talk a little bit about this NFL lineup today because the NFL has basically taken over the airways with these extra games in the end of the season. And this is a very interesting game today because we've got a dog that's barking on the line today. Rotation number 103, the Detroit Lions. This is Saturday night football, people, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I think that's what they're putting up here, but I know it's 5 o'clock our time. Plus 5.5, plus 210 on the money line. Total is 52. The Dallas Cowboys. This is a team that a lot of people are happy about this year. They've clinched their playoff spot. But over the past couple of games, they've been costing you on that money line. And we've seen them do some great things. But this tends to be a theme with the Cowboys towards the end of the year, especially if they get a playoff spot. They kind of lay back a little bit. I don't know if they're going to rest Dak Prescott in this game. But the Detroit Lions... They've got to keep playing for something. These guys have won the division 30 years. It's been since they've won the division. But in their mind, I watched their interviews. They're like, look, we're playing for something. We just haven't figured it out. But in that particular space, Dallas Cowboys, Detroit Lions, both teams are essentially two playoff teams. Are we looking at the Detroit Lions here, money line today, as a dog bet? Because I'm saying to myself, if the Dallas Cowboys hold out Dak Prescott because they have made the playoffs, you might see another win in Dan Campbell's column as the head coach of the Lions. Go ahead. And this one's to you, Ronnie B. Well, I'll tell you what, it's nice to talk football now because uh, I think both these teams are going to come out ready to play today. Uh, a little bit of incentive for both teams. Uh, we all know that Dallas plays very well at home and not on the road. Uh, Detroit also plays very well in the inside stadiums and not outdoors. So I think we're going to have an entertaining game here, and I'm leaning towards uh, taking the points with Detroit. I'm not sure about the money line, JB, but I do like uh, maybe a backdoor cover with uh, Goff. Uh, but I think it's going to be very competitive all the way through the game. So leaning towards Detroit plus the points. Detroit plus the points. That's what he likes today. I'm liking totals today simply because – these are two teams that I told you they're going to the playoff. Cowboys got their division. Detroit Lions got theirs. When you go into that perspective and you talk about quarterback play, okay? Dak Prescott, he's got the better stats, people. This guy, 30 touchdowns to seven interceptions. Jared Goff, kind of close. Just he's flip flopped on three of them. 27 touchdowns, 10 picks. I don't like the double digit numbers on the picks this late in the season especially from a guy like Dak Prescott, who used to be a pick monster, but now he's becoming an accuracy angel. So when you go into the rushing side of the football, you've got Tony Pollard. He's been able to get you almost a 1,000 yards. you got Montgomery over on the Detroit Lions. They do it by committee. Jameer Gibbs, the rookie, coming in, 872 yards. So for me, it's a very even matchup. And if you're talking about dog betting here, the Lions at plus 210, plus 205. Do you think that maybe you should buy that line up a little bit? I'm going to throw this one at you, Ron, third down best bets. Maybe give yourself a cushion here with the Lions because if Jared Goff throws one of those late picks that he's known to do, costing you a little bit of money, <laughs> plus five and a half could cost you. Go ahead. Well, I like Dallas at home. I don't go against Dallas at home. That's just the way it is. They don't lose at home. Right. On, on the road, it's, you know, 50-50. But Detroit... They're really good. They're really upset. They're trying to settle their season and get, you know, playoff seating. But Dallas is not going to fall apart again this week. They, they really did not look good last week. And I think they're going to really work on improving that. And they're just too tough at home to beat. But I think it's going to be, I think it's the over and a very close game. I, I go Dallas with three points. Dallas and three points. He's telling you to buy it down a little bit for the Dallas Cowboys. Now let's talk a little bit about this NFL playoff picture. We've got games coming up tomorrow again. You guys check out the games on FuboTV.com. You can also get your stuff ordered from the Drizzly. We're looking at it right now, and you see teams coming in. You got the Baltimore Ravens, wild card teams, seventh seed teams coming in from the AFC. Tough. You got the Miami Dolphins. 
Buffalo Bills, Cleveland Browns, and Jacksonville somehow, someway is squeaking it out in their division. But when you come over to the NFC where the Lions are, and you see Detroit and you see Dallas, and you see another team here that you might not have expected to see, and that's the Seattle Seahawks. Let's talk a little bit about the parity in college, well, not college football this year, but also the NFL with these backup quarterbacks. If you look at the teams that are in the playoffs, these are the teams that had their starting quarterbacks for the entire season. Can you believe it? It mathematically worked out. San Francisco with Purdy, Seattle, uh, you know, they've had, I think Drew Locke came in a few weeks for, uh, Geno com- Smith. Yeah, Geno Smith. Philadelphia with Hurts, Detroit, Golf, Tampa Bay. They are able to get in with Baker Mayfield. Dallas, the same deal. Do you think that the NFL draft coming up, we're mixing college into the pro football talk a little bit today. Do you think the NFL draft in that first round is going to go all quarterbacks? We've never seen the first. We've seen maybe the first three, four picks. But with the breadth and depth of the quarterbacks that are available in college this year and the need, I'm talking about the need to bring in fresh blood across the depth chart in the NFL at the quarterback position. The Browns are going to be starting Joe Flacco. And he's my age, people. Okay. He might have stayed in shape a little bit better than me to get out there and play. But I'll tell you what, the quarterback position in the NFL has been depleted over the last four or five seasons. And I don't know whether it was COVID or guys just opting out of contracts, but the majority of the teams that I see in the playoffs have their starting quarterback. And the teams that are not in the playoffs are teams that just ended up not having a starting quarterback or had to change throughout uh, the season. So with this question thrown over to you, Ronnie B., here in Las Vegas, the NFL draft going forward with the NIL, the transfer portal, does the NFL look at this and say, look, we've got to re-engage, refill our quarterback pipeline in the NFL because there's really no one coming up after these younger guys and some of their mid-tooth guys, not long in the tooth yet, but mid-tooth, we're seeing Pat Mahomes, a little bit of the grease fall out of the cup this year. Okay. Dak Prescott getting into the tail end of his career. They've got to do something in the NFL about the atrocious quarterback play. The backups that have come in, they've tanked teams that we thought would be a lot better than they were. And the relationship between players and coaches has changed as well with quarterbacks now. Seemingly, if they get a few wins under their belt, coaches are letting them stay. But if they start losing, they're getting chopped off to, at the bit right away. Ronnie B., your thoughts. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you what, JB, I, I, I kind of see a merry-go-round coming with quarterbacks, uh, both on a business and a talent uh, thing. I think the dollars are going to dictate, as we just saw Russell Wilson get benched, uh, that's a dollar decision. So I do believe that you're going to see a lot of movement on quarterbacks on these teams because – at this stage of the game of, of the schedule, if you have the quarterback, you have a good chance to win the game. If you have a backup, you know, your chances are very, very minimal. So yes, I think the, uh, the dollars are going to dictate and the quarterback changes that are going to be drafted. I think you're going to have probably eight or nine quarterbacks drafted in the first round. That's my I, opinion. Right. I'm, I'm telling you right now, the first round, in college, you've got a lot of quality quarterbacks that can come off the board in the first round, second round, third round. Going back to the position that was the big problem at the beginning of the year, the running back position, Josh Jacobs, he's not playing for the Raiders. He's sitting out these last couple of games. Looks like the Raiders most likely are out of that playoff contention. Talk to me about what ended up happening with the running back position. And I'll throw this one over to you again, Ronnie B. Las Vegas. Was there any time where you think that teams are going to start focusing more on the run? Because I didn't really see it this year. I saw them use the run in necessary spots, run focused teams like Las Vegas, the Raiders. They didn't get it done. Denver, they couldn't get it done. Okay. The Chargers couldn't get it done with Alton Eckler. They had a down season. Do you think the running back position at this point now with where the NFL is, the issues with their pay, are they going to try to make that position go more or less the way of the fullback and just make them a hybrid and go from there? Because we're just not seeing the production. The running teams did not make the playoffs this year. and That's what all the GMs and the offensive coordinators are talking about. 
they just didn't do it. Throwing this one at you, uh, Ron, third down, best bets. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you will. I mean, I mean, Jacobs, I mean, he just, he really never got going this year. I mean, it's been a numerous factor. Zavir White sure looked good last week, but, but yeah, it's, I think they are going to be hybrids because the, the NFL offense is changing. I mean, and with these quarterbacks, they're more mobile. So you don't need the running backs. They're running the ball more. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's just taking that system out of place you know i think you're going to see a lot more tight ends being used i've noticed that in the last few weeks Mm -hmm. yeah the tight end play let's talk a little bit about that though travis kelsey george kittle that's it you know and on the defensive side of the ball i never thought i would say this linebackers have gone by the way of the dinosaur there has not been one dominant dominant linebacker and i'm talking mvp style player in my opinion, at that position this season. And that was shocking for me. When we saw Matt Milano go down for the Buffalo Bills, I was like, okay, who else is going to step up? Defenses now are driven by defensive tackles and defensive ends. Shout out Linwood, Hard Rock, Hamilton, defender of the youth. He will contest to this. No one is worried about linebackers anymore. No one is worried about secondary anymore. Defenses are worried about doing one thing, sack the quarterback in three and a half seconds, come off the edge, close that pocket, defensive tackles, crush that center. And that's the what I'm seeing every single time in the defensive schemes for every single team. You're running a three, four-man blitz, but your outside linebacker position has now been moved up into a defensive end, and that defensive end is running a 4-4 running a 4-5, and tackling heavy, getting past linemen. You look at what this Aiden Hutchinson kid is able to do with the Lions, right? He's a beast. He destroys lines, just destroys them. And you look at his linebacker, Anzalone, back there, he ain't got nobody to tackle by the time, you know, he, he's always throwing his hands up, you know, and slapping, you know, Hutchinson five, but he has no one to tackle. When you talk about the dominance of the defensive end position, and the reason that a lot of quarterbacks are going out because they're getting crushed by these huge defensive ends. Drafting coming into this season. Everybody's talking about the transfer portal. Everybody's talking about this whole, you know, the NFL is changing. I think the NFL is going to be going more and more defensive. You saw the defenses. All the defenses have to do now, if we get a defensive coordinator who knows how to create turnovers essentially play offense on defense, that's going to be the future of the NFL. I saw it. It helped the Raiders win this past week. You took advantage of two mistakes or that could have been coached to help the Chiefs make those two mistakes. But nevertheless, fumble, rumble, pick sixes, defense is scoring. And I think that's going to be a theme going forward if defensive coordinators are smart to try to get their teams over the hump because – if you don't have a strong defensive end, look what the Raiders did. We drafted milk carton, guys. We can't do that again. Again, shout out Aiden O'Connell. We were the first guys to give you the grease, Aiden. We're still behind you. We like what you did. Big Ten champion. Uh, but the rest of the guys, straight milk carton. I mean, come on, man. Like, Mike, you know. Mike Meyer finally got a little Michael bit. Myers. Myers. They finally started using him because we told him what to do. Ten yards in, throw it to Mike Myers. These guys were using him as a blocker all season. But nevertheless, Ronnie B, Las Vegas chief handicapper. How do you see it going, man? We're looking at this thing and we're saying to ourselves, sports, we're looking at football. We're getting into the pro football playoffs. We're finishing out college football. But looking at that NFL draft, which I'm going to be continually staying on this because I think we're seeing a cultural and a sea shift in the NFL. There are only three players on the field now that seem to matter the most. The defensive end, the quarterback, and the tight end. Talk to me about it. Go ahead. Ronnie you know B. I'm, leaning with, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, JB. If you watch that Cleveland Brown game on Thursday night, Miles Garrett will get to the quarterback in 1.9 seconds. There you go. 1.9 seconds. 1.9 seconds. Miles Garrett, quarterback crusher. Ronnie B. Las Vegas. He's a bookmaker crusher. Pick up his tackets over at jbtheticket.com. You guys got to pick up those playing packages, people. I'm telling you, last two days of the year, he's got a couple of blowout plays. Ron Third Down Best Bets in studio with me today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to a Vegas Scoreboard Express. Got about four or five minutes left when we come back from this short commercial break. Any more shout-outs, Third Down Ron or Ronnie B? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ronnie. Okay.
Yeah, we'll be going over to the Marriott today to watch the ball game. Uh, I'm going to give you a best bet when we come back. That's right. Best bet when we come back from the day. Ron, third down best bets. You can see me over here have sleep, man. You know the coffee's out in the veins this morning. But that's why I bring you guys on the board to help the fans stay up on the grease. Go ahead. I got to mention my niece, Ali Cortez. And, of course, I got to mention Hard Rock Hamilton. Big guy. Was it for you? Wouldn't be doing this, brother. There you go, man. You got this guy all the way to Vegas in studio. KSHP AM 1400. We're coming back and getting the money. Vegas Scoreboard Express, Saturday and Sunday morning at 6 on KSHP North Las Vegas, FM, AM, k 6 hp North Las Vegas, and KSHP.com. Basketball season is heating up, so stay in the game with Fubo TV. Get the NBA, NCAA, FIBA, and more. Get seven days free at VegasScoreboardExpress.com. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. JV the ticket and the two rounds back at you live KSHP 107.1. Want to give a shout out to my main man Mark Hayes, station director. Happy New Year to all you listeners out here in Las Vegas. Again, wouldn't be doing this without you. I appreciate all of your support this year. And again, you guys know what time it is. Waking you up early in the morning here at Vegas School Board Express. Got him back on the line. My main man Ronnie B, chief handicapper. At jbtheticket.com, Ron Third Down Best Bets. Follow him on Instagram at RaiderHawk1 in studio with me. So, guys, we got about two minutes left. Give me your best pick of the day. Go ahead. Ronnie B., go ahead. Okay, JB, I'm going to go with the Penn State Nittany Lions today. Kick off at 9 Pacific time. Their defense is going to show up today, and I think Franklin wants this game bad. He's telling you he likes the Penn State Nittany Lions. Telling you to go with those Cougars. Ron, third down, best bets, best play of the day. Go ahead. Georgia Bulldogs. He's telling you he likes the Georgia ooh, Bulldogs. Ooh. He's telling you go with the Georgia Bulldogs. I don't have a best play of the day. My best play of the day is at jbtheticket.com. Go over to jbtheticket.com. Pick up some of those late end of year deals we've got for you. Not just picks, people. We got our friends over at Coffee Brothers. We've got Drizzly delivering the alcohol that morning brew, which I totally forgot to get myself this morning, which is why I've been sluggish. But the picks are still going to be good, people. And, of course, you guys got to get our friends at Fubo TV, Paramount Plus. We've got everything that you need to watch the games on the go on your phone. Don't get cabled. Get Fubo TV. And don't get left off of the hill. Get Paramount Plus. So, guys, that's a wrap for the show. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the big board today. Got about a minute left. Ronnie B., any final program, shout-outs, any games, anything you got coming up tomorrow, we will be back for the NFL Sunday Morning Grease right here on KSHB, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Go ahead. Yeah, tune in tomorrow. I got my game in a month tomorrow in the NFL. It's a five-star play. Please uh, pay attention tomorrow. We're going to post it for you tomorrow. Thank you so much for that. And Ron, third down best bets. Again, congratulations and thank you for getting here to Las Vegas. He's going to be on site. You guys around town are going to be able to get to see him representing for VSX because I'm going to be back here at the big board doing my Wizard of Oz thing, making sure that the money stays and plays here with you in your pockets, giving you picks that pay. Final minute. Ron, third down best bets. Any final thoughts now that you have done your first in-studio show here at KSHB? Go ahead. Yeah, it was awesome today, bro. Uh, Raiders, hire Antonio Pierce. The product is excellent. They play hard. They kick butt. And the team believes. Just give the man the job. He's earned the opportunity. There you go. Told you he earned the opportunity. We told you we didn't like the interim tag. And that's a wrap, guys. JB the Ticket, Vegas Scoreboard Express. When we get back tomorrow, we are going to be talking some more football picks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Follow the show on Instagram at JB the Ticket. Subscribe, like, and give me one of those five stars. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great betting day. And stay tuned. Up next, Ralph Zarocco, Race Day, Las Vegas. Have a great one, folks. Listening to the boss of the big boss.